Hi everyone, Bren here and the video that you're about to see this week here at Gigi the Garden Girl will be my very last one for winter this year 2019 and next week when you see me again it's gonna be spring. I've been really looking forward to showing you this. This is um, out the front and it looks very different now. Um, I'm still playing around with it a bit but you can see I put in a new archway um, with a similar style to the one in the back garden except I put a, um, an old piece of wood across the top where I might actually write something on it or even maybe name my garden, give it a name. And I've used some various upcycled pieces here. I've moved some of my containers, those blue containers there that have the spring bulbs in them, an old suitcase, old pots and baskets. And there's a wheel there resting on a old rusty shovel. So, this will probably change now, my layout, so don't be surprised if it looks different next week, slightly different, because I'm still not 100% happy with it, but I hope you get the idea of what I'm trying to create here. And can you tell I'm a bit obsessed with using baskets in my garden? They're always so cheap in the op shops or thrown out for council pickup and I fill this one up here with um, some more primulas and I've placed it underneath the camellia tree and look at the leaves the petals now they're starting to change a more brown color and there aren't as many blooms on the tree so they'll all break down now all those petals and feed the tree for its beautiful burst of color next year I'm over here by one of the side gates that leads into the back garden because there's a couple of things to show you here. Um, firstly, I planted some um, Jerusalem artichokes all along there behind the bird of paradise. And the second thing I wanted to show you was this vine that's growing over the gateway. That's my passion fruit vine and oh, I can't decide what to do. Like. Um, it's been in there now for a few years and it's looking so sickly at the moment. I'm really not sure if I'll get anything out of it this year. Um, I might end up making the hard decision to pull it out. But if I do do that, I was thinking um, what I could do is maybe grow some type of um, vine crop over it in the summertime, maybe um, some beans. Okay, so let's have a look here. As we walk by, there's some of the globe artichokes. You can see down here, I've got lots of borage, all those big leafed plants that have self-seeded amongst the ranunculus. I'll probably have to pull some of them out because these grow quite fast and I'm, I just don't want them to overshadow the ranunculus because um, I've waited a long time to see them flower. What else have you got down here? Got lots and lots of um, borage everywhere. It's been a bit of a thug. It's taken over. Like I have a few um, foxgloves in there. There's actually one in there and it's just been um, covered up by the um, borage. Lots of Elysium. And then here, these are my um, radishes, my um, watermelon radishes. Remember I pulled one out a few weeks ago and it wasn't ready so I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Some nice rhubarb there and some kale, another rhubarb and this week 
I've done even more pruning on the apple trees and I can finally say with delight that they're finished being pruning. I just got in there in the nick of time because on, um, is it on Saturday or Sunday? It's actually um, spring. So I'm glad I got them done. They were kind of getting to be a bit of a priority. Let's head down now over to the raised garden bed area. It's got lots of flowers down here. They're the um, corn flowers. No buds on these ones yet, but I have seen some in the veggie patch. And do you remember a few weeks ago, I planted some bulbs along the edges of the um, raised beds here? Um, well, I have some good news to tell you or show you. Look down here. All these little spring bulbs are starting to pop up now. These are the crocuses and I've got a few there and I also have some snowdrops over this way. You see, aren't they the most dainty little flowers you've ever seen? And over here in this bed, got some lovely chard in there and I've got the corn flowers, lots of buds. And you can see the peas are starting to wind the way up this old upcycled bird cage. Oh my goodness. I never realized that this plant that I put in here could get this big. It's really starting to take over the bed. I can never pronounce the name, so I'll just pop it up on the screen now. But look at it. It's even like gone over to this part of the garden bed and it's starting to cover up my cabbage. So I might have gonna have to prune it or try and trail it back because I certainly don't want this beautiful cabbage to be covered up. And I finally planted out these beds that have been empty they're semi-empty for a while now and I just used some of those seedlings that I had. Oh geez, that one's looking a bit sad. I might have to come out here and give them a water. But these are um, my little freckled lettuce seeds, some other Asian greens in there. And I had a whole load of um, Elysium and I just went crazy and planted it absolutely everywhere. But this bed's a bit out of character for me and um, I only noticed after I had done it but look I planted everything in rows which is something that I most certainly don't tend to do and um, I just like planting things random randomly all mixed up together and um, so I don't know what I was thinking when I did this oh how lovely do all the colors look in this bed Got some flat leaf parsley over there, the red mustard green, some daisy flowers and calendula. I also have um, over there all those greens there are rock, or not rocket, there are radishes that so I'm just going to let go to flower. And around this way, I have this pot here, give you a little update on it. This is the pot that has um, all my. Um, you know, I just threw in a few um, mixed lettuce seeds and look at it now. <laughs> it's just so happy. Although I do have the rocket going to flower, but I just love the look of this pot with all those lovely flowers. And can you imagine when the um, Dutch irises start to bloom? It's really gonna look absolutely magnificent. I've put that um, bug hotel that I made over here for the moment, resting up against this pole amongst all the rosemary that's in flower. And on the other side, all the lovely lavender. But I really need to do, I really need to, you know, find the final position for this. And here's a little update in all of my containers um, that I planted up over winter time and these are all full of spring flowering plants 
and most of them are doing pretty well like I do have an issue issues here with some of the pansies but I might give that a liquid um, seaweed feed and that will hopefully you know get that plant back to growing nice and healthy again but otherwise like they're all doing fantastic and I'm looking forward to with these ones here planting them out around the garden let's go and check out this area now where I have an upcycle project that I made this week and also I would like to pick off a few of those oranges off the tree down here believe it or not that cloche there is actually an old lampshade that um, I picked up um, for free this week and I have a few of these old lampshades in the shed that I want to upcycle into these cloches and what you need to do is you need to turn the lampshade upside down and make sure it's one of the really old ones so don't worry about what it looks like on the outside and what material or color it is just have a look at the framework and you can see this one here has a nice strong metal framework which is ideal just what we want because I find the newer um, lampshades don't tend to have this so all I did there was um, I got some chicken wire I, I took the cover off I put some chicken wire over the top um, sealed it in here just wrapping the chicken wire around the frame and this is uh, ideal to cover um, you know very young seedlings if you have any issues in your garden with garden pests like the way I do a little bit with the cockatoos see what they've done there to that poor chard that's why I've got it covered there I'm trying to see if I can get it to come back um, and start growing again it doesn't look too great at the moment but we'll see so if you know you wanted to use something like this cloche um, and there's still say frost about and you want to protect your seedlings you can put some bubble wrap on the interior of it and that will give your seedlings a bit more insulation and hopefully get them through those cold mornings and here this is um, the Sorinthi plant and look at that it's almost gonna flower and beside there I have this really interesting plant it's um, a milk thistle and look how big it's got I didn't really think it would grow this quickly I have a few of these plants dotted around the garden and they're quite interesting um, you can actually eat the leaves believe it or not despite it being quite spiky so if I come up a bit closer you can see some of the spikes there but you can actually just cut them off and eat the leaves um, I haven't done it yet <laughs> Um, I haven't tried it yet but um, I will do and I'll let you know how it went but um, I just have to cut the spikes off first and um, when this also flowers um, you can also eat the flowers um, when they're young as well so it's quite an interesting plant to have in the garden oh walking past this area of the garden where the sweet peas are starting to flower you just can't help yourself. You have to stop and have a sniff because it's absolutely heavenly. I'm going to pick a few oranges now to bring inside. Um, we've mostly just been enjoying them as is, you know, cut into quarters. And they're really sweet now. They seem to sweeten up as the weeks go by. How good do they look but I'll leave these here for the moment because I still have a few more things to show you let's go and take a look in the greenhouse which really is the heart of the garden at the moment so the first thing you might notice is it looks a lot more tidy in here and um, I did a big clean up 
this weekend. I did have a few um, seedlings <laughs> that died unfortunately and I also moved all my trays from the smaller greenhouse into here um, but believe it or not the smaller greenhouse now is full up as well. I did another big sowing session a couple of days ago but let's take a look and see what's in here now. I have a few of my tomatoes that have germinated but not as many as I actually hoped. If I don't see any germination now in the next couple of weeks I might end up re-sowing some of them. Here's a whole load of sweet peas. I'll be putting them out in the garden soon. I'm really happy some of my chilies have germinated and I'm just waiting on these billy buttons to um, pop through although I do have some in another tray that have germinated and down here that's one of the trays of tomatoes that I moved from the smaller greenhouse. This week I'm going to go even stronger on the seed sowing. I'm going to put in my zucchinis, cucumbers, pumpkins, um, sweet corn. I'm going to go with all the edible crops. Um, so it really is going to be a bit of a juggling act now over the next few weeks as more and more space gets taken up with these um, trays of seedlings. Underneath this archway and around the corner you'll see there that I finally got my um, trellis finished for the sweet peas that are doing absolutely terribly along there. And this trellis is just made out of um, branches and um, twigs um, from pruning that I did in my garden over the winter time. I've just gone and grabbed those oranges that we picked a little bit earlier on. And I'm going to head inside now. I hope you enjoyed this week's garden update video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again next Friday.